Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the most important question. Which molecule is the actual genetic material? So till now we discussed about DNA in detail. So we got to know how exactly this double stranded structure of DNA is formed, how it was discovered. Uh, so we know all that. We know about the complementary base pairing technique. Now the question is, how was it proved that DNA is the actual genetic material? Because before nobody knew that which molecule is the actual genetic material. They just knew from whatever was discovered before this. Like the first experiment on genetics were performed by Gregor Mendel. So Mendel gave a term called factors which later came to be known as genes. So as per Mendel, factors were the one which carries the genetic material from one generation to the next generation. So as per Mendel, so Mendel gave the concept of factors. After Mendel, many other scientists came, one of the prominent ones were Thomas Morgan. So Thomas Morgan gave the chromosomal theory of inheritance. So he spoke about genes, he also spoke about the chromosomes and he said that chromosomes have play a very important role in the process of inheritance. So there is something in the chromosome which gets carried from one generation to the next generation. So that was told by Morgan. There were other scientists like Bovary and Sutton who gave the Bovary Sutton theory stating that uh, stating the chromosomal theory of inheritance. So they also spoke about at the chromosomal level. So in fact, uh, if you talk about Morgan, he not only spoke about the chromosomal theory, he also spoke about many new concepts like linkage. He also spoke about uh, the recombinations. So he spoke about all those important stuffs and uh, he brought a lot of change to what was given by Mendelian theories of inheritance. So this Bovary Sutton theory again they gave the chromosomal theory. So all that was known that the genetic material is somewhere inside the cell, somewhere inside the nucleus of the cell and somewhere inside the chromosomes. But which molecule in chromosome that was not sure. So when did we get to know that which molecule in chromosome acts as the genetic material? So it was in the year of 1926 that the mechanism of genetic inheritance reached a molecular level. That is scientists started performing experiments to understand which molecule is responsible for the process of genetic inheritance. So Though what experiment was performed in 1926 which helped in determining that particular molecule. So in 1926 there was a scientist named Griffith who performed this experiment which is now popularly known as the Griffith's experiment. So let us see what did Griffith do in his experiment. So let us see what was done in Griffith's experiment. So Griffith experiment with Streptococcus pneumonia. So what is Streptococcus pneumonia? It is a bacteria that causes the disease pneumonia. So this is that variety of bacteria. So he took those variety of bacteria, Streptococcus pneumonia, and the two strains of bacteria were used. Now what do you mean by two strains? Basically there are two variety of this bacteria which are available. One is called the S strain, the other one is the R strain. So let us see what is S strain and what is R strain. So S strain, S stands for smooth. So the word S refers to smooth. So those variety of bacteria which had a smooth polysaccharide code on their outer surface, they were said to be the S strain bacteria. So one set of bacteria had the coat which was smooth and little uh, slimy and the mucus coat. The other variety of bacteria was the R strain. R is for rough. So they did not have the polysaccharide coat and that is why they had a rough appearance from outside. So they lacked the coat and therefore they were easily destroyed by immune system of the host. Now due to the presence of the polysaccharide coat, it is, it is something very obvious, right? Let us suppose you are present, you are there inside your house. So your house is like a coat for you. It is a covering for you. It is covering you, so it is giving you more protection. So if somebody tries to attack you from outside, it is difficult to attack you because you are being protected by your house, which is locked from all the sides. 
so that is the scenario for the s strain bacteria but for the r strain bacteria they do not have the coat now since the coat is not present they are more vulnerable to attacks so they get easily destroyed by the immune system of the host now these bacteria they often live as parasites they often live inside the body of a host organism so the if if the host organism wants they can easily attack and destroy the r strain bacteria so these are the two strains so one is with a polysaccharide coat the other is without a polysaccharide coat now griffith made use of both these types of bacteria in his experiment so let us see how this uh, these two bacteria the usage of two type, two variety of the same bacteria helped now also from this we get to know that the s strain is virulent so what is the what does that mean that means that since it cannot be destroyed by somebody else so it can actually resist so it has more resistance and that is why s strain was virulent and it could cause disease so let us see what happened now in griffith experiment what he did was he injected the s strain of bacteria in a mouse so he took a mouse which was living obviously and then he injected into the mouse s strain of the pneumococcus bacteria and what happened it was seen that the mice died of pneumonia why because as i said that the s strain is virulent now the s strain being virulent it caused it it helped pneumonia to develop inside the mice and as a result the mice died in a few days now in the second set of experiment he injected r strain of the bacteria into the mouse now what happened in this case now the r strain is non virulent so it is not going to cause pneumonia so the mouse was alive and it was healthy there was no signs of pneumonia so these were the two scenarios so what did this prove this proved that the s strain was virulent but the r strain was not right okay now what he did was he injected heat killed s strain what is this heat killed s strain now what did griffith do was that uh, griffith killed the s strain bacteria by heating them he found that if he heated the s strain bacteria the bacteria got killed so now if the bacteria is now killed what is our uh, guess what will you guess that now if the bacteria which is already dead if that is injected inside the body of the mouse will the bacteria be able to cause pneumonia no right because the bacteria is already dead so he injected heat killed s strain inside the body of the mouse and he observed that the mouse was alive that is it did not die so that is what as per our expectation that obviously the bacteria which was causing pneumonia if that bacteria itself is dead so obviously it will not cause pneumonia and the mouse will be alive now the most interesting part of this experiment was the fourth part so in fourth part what he did was he took a mixture of injected heat uh, he took a mixture of heat killed s strain and live r strain so what do you think should happen so heat killed s strain so it is already killed so even though s was virulent but it is already killed so obviously this will this is not going to cause pneumonia what about the live r strain bacteria now r strain bacteria we already saw that it was non virulent so this is anyways non virulent so in this case also the mouse should be alive so that is our expectation but what did he observe when he injected this mixture of heat killed s and live r strain he found that the mouse died in a few days and the and pneumonia happened in the mouse so now griffith concluded that there is something interesting which is happening in this entire set of experiment so this proved the fourth set of experiment actually proved that something was being transferred from the heat killed s strain to the r strain up to the live r strain and due to that this live r strain now why is it that s strain is virulent and r strain is non virulent now the s strain is virulent only due to the presence of the polysaccharide coat and the r strain was non virulent because it did not have the polysaccharide coat so that was the only distinction by which we call one as s and the other one as r now if the r strain also develops a polysaccharide coat then it will have all the properties of s strain right so it will actually become s strain so now griffith 
thought that maybe something is getting transferred from this heat killed S strain to the live R strain because of which the R strain is developing the polysaccharide coat around itself and it is becoming virulent. So that is what was his assumption. But now the question was what is it that is getting transferred? Now to trust his thought further, what did Griffith do? Now even after the fourth experiment, fourth part of the experiment was done, Griffith tried to do some research on the dead mice, right? And he found that live S bacteria was recovered from the dead mice. Now, please remember what did we inject into the dead mice? So what the, all that was in injected into the dead mice was live R strain and dead S strain. So this was injected into the mice. But now when the mice is dead and when some um, investigation was done on the body of that mouse, it was found that live S bacteria was present. So now this all, all the more confirmed his thought because he was thinking something of that sort that maybe there was something which was causing the R strain to develop a polysaccharide coat and then change it to S form. So he concluded that something caused the bacteria to change from one type to another type. That is something caused this live strain, R strain to get transformed into live S strain. Because it was not possible for the dead S strain to become alive. Because that is impossible because it is already killed. So those bacteria cannot become alive. So the next option that is available is that the live R strain bacteria get transformed into live S strain bacteria. But even for that, he was wondering what would have caused that? What would have made this transformation possible? So this is when he gave his conclusion that there was some transforming principle which transferred from a heat killed S strain to R strain and transformed it virulent. So he called these as transforming principle because he did not know exactly what got transferred from the R strain what got transferred from the dead S strain to the R strain and because of which R got changed into S. He actually didn't know what was that but he called it as the transforming principle because this transfer transformed the entire variety of the bacteria. It transformed it from a live R strain to a live S strain. So this was a complete transformation and that is why he named it as the transforming principle. So now the question was, what was this transforming principle? So this was confirmed that, okay, there is something which is getting transferred. But what, how was the biochemical nature of the transforming principle found? So how to find out that what is the chemical composition of this transforming principle? Whether it is a protein, whether it is a carbohydrate, whether it is a fat, what is it? So finding out the biochemical nature of the transforming principle became very important to understand what exactly is the genetic material. Because in this experiment, we can see that something is getting transferred from something is getting transferred from one bacteria to the other. So if we get to know that something, we will know that okay, this molecule helps in transferring stuffs from one organism to the other. And that is how we can conclude that they are the genetic material. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.